Hello and welcome to The Changemakers with me, Michael Heyman. Maurice Ostro is the entrepreneur turned campaigner on a mission to make a difference. His initiative, Entrepreneurial Giving, introduces founders to philanthropy. It's a movement to nurture a new generation of purpose-led firms. The give is that founders donate a percentage of their exit proceeds to charity. The get is that they become part of a powerful and growing community of tomorrow's entrepreneurs. Maurice, welcome. Thank you very much. Entrepreneurial Giving, give us the pitch. Well, I'd rather we call it EG, and thank you for actually the opportunity to talk about the, the giving element of it, because it is giving, and we don't deny that, but it's EG because it's about exemplars, examples of people who have done well by doing good. So it's about business rather than philanthropy. So and the example really matters. It really does, and people uh, are looking always for people who have done um, amazing things, and sometimes people, at least in the old model, used to be, make a lot of money, that's what it's all about. And then at the end, you'll build a hospital or give some money to Greenpeace or others to deal with the fact that you had done a lot of bad things in your business career. And we don't want it to be, I don't think that model works anymore. Right, now you're part of a group of purpose-led leaders, people that are making the case that you can be purposeful and profitable, and in fact, they are increasingly interlinked. How is that playing out with EG in terms of the way you're building the organization? So one of the things we're trying to look at is how do you have the right type of framework? And today, of course, there's some fantastic virtual tools that people use to connect together, but we still haven't lost that amazing contact you have by sitting next right. to somebody. So, so it's a, a physical, community. A physical, physical network, a community. Exactly. Right. And so what we're going to be doing and what we are, have already started with EG is to set up entrepreneurial communities all over the place, wherever you get a few dozen startup businesses who think, I am here to make money. That's my primary goal and objectives right now, but I want to do it in the right way. I want to think about the way I hire people, the way I treat my staff, the environmental impact that my business has, all of these things. Because quite often this comes at the point of exit, I've got the cash, I can give a bit of it back. But are you saying that you create a better business if you hardwire the give back into the early stage. Absolutely, in a way that perhaps didn't apply decades ago. Even when I started my businesses, it didn't have the same frame, we didn't have the millennials that today want to work, 88% of them, as you may know, want to work for a business whose ethos resonates with our own. Right. So if you want to so hire- So there's an imperative, right? There is, and if you want to hire the best people, how could you ignore that group, if you want to get the best people who will also then be even more incentivized to work because they believe in what you do. So that's what EG is about. So the world is changing, entrepreneurs need to change with it. How does EG help them do that? So a lot of it is learning. So your startup business, and I, I look back at even when I started all my enterprises, but particularly the first. We are pretty green then. It's, you're, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you, you, I, at least most of us didn't. I mean, so maybe it was different for you. And, and you need guidance and you look for mentors. You look I, for those people who can help I would, you. I always remember um, listening to Charles Dunstan, the car phone warehouse CEO, saying that he hoped the epitaph on his um, gravestone would be, I got away with it. I mean, is that, is that how a lot of startup founders are feeling right now in terms of I'm making it up as I go along, do you think? I think they probably feel that, but I think they know that they won't get away with it, perhaps in the way that when Charles started and I started, and he's going to be speaking at the first of the EG events shortly, all about how you can be a purposeful business and how you can use that. And we're saying openly, by the way, do well with it. You know, let your consumers know that you're a business with a difference. So it's not just about recruiting the best talent. It's about having a message that resonates with media, with the public that you're, that you're suppliers, Everybody. Right. What, what makes you optimistic that entrepreneurs are going to get it? I mean, why this group of people? I, you know, you see this Unilever, some of the bigger corporations that are trying to sort of change, become more purposeful. But what makes you think that Britain's entrepreneurs are particularly well placed to become more purpose led? I'm optimistic because I see with all of my friends who are entrepreneurs, that they are very reactive. That's really what defines an entrepreneur. They see opportunities. And it'd be, you'd be hard pressed not to get a sense of, of the zeitgeist of today, where people, that lack of trust, 
the, the people want to, and they are actually voting with their feet, right? They're voting with their wallets. They're deciding which coffee they buy, the regular coffee or the fair trade coffee. They're making those decisions every day. And entrepreneurs are the first to react. Yes, the big companies, they have their teams, they know they're going to do, and they do their CSR, and it's all great. And, and, and by the way, I don't mean those that are looking at sort of greenwashing. I mean genuine CSR is fantastic, but it's the entrepreneurs who react much faster react much faster and by so doing can make the difference, make the change. They see it. I mean, so many of the entrepreneurs that you meet are really ambitious these days. They want to change the world in their area of business. In terms of how you then supercharge that ambition, get hold of it, do something with it, what's the role of the successful exited entrepreneur, more people like you, I guess, getting back and getting involved? How do, they, how do we create more Maurice Ostros? I think most people, if they've had a success, um, will not be so arrogant as to think it was all down to their brilliance. Um, a lot of it is down to many other factors and feel sometimes that they want to give back. Is luck a factor? Luck is, you could call it luck or divine providence, karma. I don't care what you call it, as long as you feel that it isn't all about you. Mm. And then you say, well, you know, maybe I should. And partly it's fun. I mean, if you have an entrepreneurial group of people and you get to engage with them, you get to hear stuff that you wouldn't otherwise hear. And you get an energy, do you? You do. At, at such a positive energy. Look back to when you first started. You know, you're, you think you can take on the world and then real life happens. And well, it well, gets... because a lot of people that are sinister about the motives of business people and why get involved. I mean, they, they don't necessarily understand this point, I think, that actually a lot of successful people love giving back. They love mentoring. They love getting involved because of the energy they get seeing perhaps their younger selves in some of these sort of early stage firms. I mean, is that, is that it that or is, is it certainly more? True. It might be that there is an ego issue and everyone likes to sit in front of an audience who are looking at you admiringly. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. I don't mind what the motivation is. It doesn't the, matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you do, not what you're thinking. How far could you take a movement like entrepreneurial giving? How, how, what does good look like for you? Good, and this might sound very ambitious, and perhaps it is, is global. Today we live in a very interconnected world. The chapters that we're starting up, which is around the country, need to connect with those internationally. So the baker in Birmingham who joins a local chapter will talk to the baker in Berlin because they are both at a similar stage, they're starting businesses, the same challenges, what do they do with a flower at the end of the day, the environmental impact, what about their staff, all of these things. And they don't see somebody thousands of miles away as their competitor. So they're quite open and they share ideas. Mm. So I think this not only can be, but needs to be global. Do you think that entrepreneurship is an, an instrument to help improve the world. I mean, is that, why, is that why you're seeing it in global terms? Does it have a positive part to play in the development of lots of different nations? Is that, is that part of the it's a, motivation? It's a huge component. Now, I don't deny there is a massive area where government can get involved and equally where NGOs, charities can get involved. But I actually believe that for business, which reacts a lot faster than government and a lot faster than charities in terms of their strategy because they're, these people are making decisions for themselves. They don't have to take a lot of people with them. But, but it was once said that the business of business is business. The business of business is not necessarily activism and getting out there in the way that you are proclaiming. How do you create more activists in terms of people that see life in the same way? Because it is business. We, we don't want, and that's why EG is about examples of people who have done well in their business and done good. Um, it's about the decisions that you make about your recruitment, about your environmental, all those things that you're doing every day, business decisions, not charity decisions, that'll position yourself, particularly today in a way that perhaps years ago didn't exist right. because the consumer market knows what you're doing. But, and but activism is still the example, not the norm. So in terms of explaining your own story, tell us a little bit about why are you an activist? Take us right back to the young Maurice Ostro. What are the conditions that are shaping your life in your early 20s, let's say? I sadly came from a uh, family where my father was a Holocaust survivor. And the reality is that, and I've said this before, that I, I don't 
have a, a thought that this is a given, that this, I, I have a right to this. In fact, I very See, often very, wonder... Very realistically, according to the numbers, you might not be here. That's precisely right. I mean, but by all probabilities, my father should never have survived and I should never have been born. And when, when you have that, and you wake up every morning with that thought, and I say, you know, why am I here? So is it just to buy another bit of tech or a lovely holiday or, or, or so mortality you know you've got a sense of time you you have to have a feeling that you're here for something other than just consuming the next meal and uh, and that hopefully you know is something that permeates I, I read he was the, the Jewish Indiana Jones what why was that uh, I mean literally he jumped off a uh, speeding train in the middle of the night with Nazi sharpshooters uh, positioned above to kill those who are escaping on the, the train going to Treblinka. Um, and besides surviving that, was caught, taken by the Gestapo to a camp, escaped the camp, was buried in a grave in uh, December 1944 and remained until the middle of January 1945. I, I mean, a remarkable, remarkable story, not story. miracle after miracle. And of course, you sit there and you think, well, is all that... If there is, whether it's God, karma, you know, luck, whatever you want to call it, was it just so that a guy like Maurice could just have, you know, more stuff? Just or, become or... wealthy. He could have done that. Yeah. A lot of people do that. A lot of people get wealthy and they go and retire, you know, and, and live abroad or whatever. I mean, you've chosen <sighs> to get involved yeah. in terms. Of, but do you have to have that? I mean, you know, that dramatic backdrop in life has clearly been a catalyst for action. How so, more, I mean, not everybody's got uh, that, right? Please, so, please God, people won't have no, that sure. kind of trauma or, or uh, uh, tragedy in their background. But I think what most people get today is the interconnectedness of the world that we didn't have because we see everything happening around everywhere instantly. And when you do that and you recognize the impact that people can have with their day-to-day -day actions, Yes. We, we didn't see that years ago because it took so long for things to happen, but, but today they don't. But yet still, if you believe survey after survey, the trust in business is not what it should be. Does that, does that worry you? Or is that hugely even, is there any opportunity in it? Is there any, can it, can it be restored? I think for entrepreneurs, it is an, a massive opportunity because if you are a business with a difference, if you can show you have real ethics and morality in the way you work, you become suddenly a benefit to your community. So of course your community, when they vote with their wallets and they say, well, this is a guy that's helpful to, to us. Why would we go elsewhere? So a, an, an entrepreneur can get a sense of that. They don't need the trauma and the tragedy. They just need to be great entrepreneurs just say here's a way for me to be a super success I'm going to show myself to be different to my competitors and eg is one such there are many others doing this and this is happening mm. we could catalyze it we could get it going faster and the more people that come aboard the faster the world will hopefully change that conversation which you are so right about that trust which is pretty much disappeared from government and even charity sadly now the business world no longer is the place where that trust resides. Right, but great entrepreneurs through entrepreneur, entrepreneurial giving, e.g., they're gonna be part of that answer, part of that fight back. Not the only answer, people, there are many people doing great things and they're wonderful and we need to create a collaborative network. We have to engage with everybody who wants to do this kind of thing because we all benefit from it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're sitting in a capitalist society. We, we have a nice uh, standard of, of living in this country and, and in many developed countries, and we want to see that continue. And, it's, and um, capitalism is not perfect, but it's the least bad system that has been proven, uh, at least at this stage in, in history. So let's see if we can make it better. Maurice Ostro, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Maurice. Cheers. A brilliant message there from Maurice. If you're looking for a group of change makers, then look to our entrepreneurs. So many of the startups you meet are inspired by the opportunity for good growth and to making a difference. EG builds on this with a vision for activism and commitment. As a successful entrepreneur, Maurice knows better than most that to get good, you've got to give back. And that's because... Action matters.